everyone. This is the first in a series of videos we'll be doing about intentional community. And I guess a good thing to kick it off would be to talk about what the term intentional community actually means. Okay. It's actually a really broad term that can be applied to any number of living arrangements, like eco-villages, which are super popular now, co-housing situations, cooperatives, dormitories, communes. Yeah, so communes is not such a great word. For me, it conjures up all sorts of images of people with long, greasy hair and beards. Kate Ashbury in the 1960s. We at the Bruderhof prefer the term settlement. But so anyway, an intentional community is a place where people purposefully order their lives in such a way that they're able to support one another. The idea is that people need one another and we're best able to be there for each other when we live in, in close proximity. Yeah, and if you want to get an idea of the huge number and variety of intentional communities, just in the US and Canada, you can check out the Foundation for Intentional Community website. I think it used to be called the Fellowship for Intentional Community. Yeah, something like that. And I'll put a link in the description. But there are literally thousands of communities in North America alone. Or if you're interested in strictly Christian intentional communities, there's also a book by David Jensen called Intentional Christian Community Handbook, and you can check that out. The Bruderhof has been living in intentional community for almost 100 years now. Yeah, our 100-year anniversary is actually coming up in June 2020. Go Bruderhof! But there are other amazing historical and contemporary examples of intentional communities. And Melinda, I think you actually stayed at one for a while, didn't you, a couple years back? Yeah, um, it was the Insidio Church in Portland, Oregon. And they're a really awesome group of people who are committed to living life together and following Christ. And I got to spend time there for just over a month with them all. And even though the look was pretty different from the Bruderhof, the feel and the purpose was much the same. Right. But then there's this, this rich history of community movements from the Beguines and Begards, love those names, uh, in Northern Europe in the 13th through the 16th century up to the radical Anabaptists, the early Quakers, the Moravian Church, and then right up through the 20th century. What's funny, and I've heard this, is that most intentional communities actually start with little to no awareness that other people have done and are doing this, and they think they actually came up with the idea and they only find out later of all these other examples. Well, I guess it just goes to show that the desire for tight social cohesion is part of our makeup and maybe even evolutionarily hardwired. And if you go far enough back in history, Everyone lived in small tribes or settlements supporting each other, so this is really nothing new. On the flip side, there's a reason most intentional communities don't last. Right, but we're going to talk about that in a different video, not this one. Right, among other things. So if you have questions like, how do I start an intentional community, or how do I join an intentional community, leave them in the comment section below, or you can email us and we'll do our best to answer them. And also, please give this video a like if you like it, and subscribe and ring the bell. See you next time.